market was also reacting positively to that. Let's talk about another counter that we are focusing on today is of course Prime Focus. Uh, the company has posted a loss of about 20.3 crore rupees in the third quarter versus a loss of about 7.2 crore rupees in the same quarter last year. But the stock is reacting positively 4% higher. Uh, to get a sense of what's, what really this loss was all about and what's the outlook ahead to discuss that we have right now um, Mr. Vikas Rati, Group Chief Financial Officer at Prime Focus. Thank you very much Mr. Rati for joining us here on NDTV Profit. Uh, give us a sense of how the quarter was for the company, posted a loss of about 20.3 odd crore rupees. Why was a loss there and what's the outlook now? Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, I think we actually, from a from an operating perspective and a core business perspective, we're fairly pleased with the quarter. Uh, we delivered pretty strong growth in our revenues as well as on the EBITDA side. EBITDA hitting about 25%, uh, and overall EBITDA up about 105 crores. The loss uh, primarily is in the back of what I've spoken about and previously. Uh, we divested our non-core London post-production business. Uh, and uh, with the reconsolidation of the balance sheet, the net worth that's uh, flowing out of the business uh, from a console perspective is causing loss of about 40 crores. And if you, if you take that, that's fundamentally what's causing the 20 odd crores pat uh, differential. Uh, you know, barring that exceptional item, you would actually have a pat positive about 18 crores, uh, a PBT positive about 51 crores, which is about a 12% margin. So, you know, after a fairly active year from a strategic perspective, where we actually absorbed a bunch of businesses, you know, we've actually dramatically grown the size and scale and the relevance of Prime Focus, you know, to our global media clients. I think we have delivered on uh, on the operating side, and I think with the exceptional items now going to be behind us, we should be able to deliver strong growth on the bottom line as well going forward. What kind of a target are you working around with if this was just a one-off that you're seeing it was an exceptional item that you uh, had in this particular quarter? For the investors who are watching at this point in time, what is the outlook you would want to give? What kind of a growth strategy are you working on? What kind of numbers are you targeting uh, ahead from here on? Yeah, no, I think uh, that's a good question. I think I've been on your program in the past as well, and I guided towards, you know, uh, you know, EBITDA margins, you know, post-absorption, all these businesses, you know, trending back towards 20, 22%. And I think that's the guidance we've kind of talked about, you know, going forward for FI16. Uh, and frankly, this will be on the back of dramatically higher revenues. I think we'll be more than doubling our revenues uh, for what we did delivered in the previous uh, in the previous fiscal. So I think, you know, we are. Uh, going to be back into the 20 odd percent plus EBITDA margin range, uh, you know, on a much higher revenue perspective. So I think uh, we're looking forward to you know fairly robust uh, quarters, you know, uh, you know, quarter on quarter perspective, and I think delivering good uh, margins and you know with all these ex exceptionals uh, that are now going to be behind us, I think you'll start seeing the impact of that um, already on the pad side. Mr. Rati, the top line growth was quite impressive given the fact that in uh, June, uh, in the June quarter last day, you had sold off your back end business. Um, can you tell us what was the growth in the creative division and what was the growth uh, in the software division? Yeah, so see, you know, both these businesses today now comprise more than 90 odd percent, uh, you know, of our of our of our consolidated figures. I think both businesses kind of grew very uh, very rapidly. That's what's leading to a you know 30 odd percent growth in revenues and about uh, you know 25 percent EBITDA margin. So if you look at what my EBITDA was last quarter, which is I'm just saying December quarter, year on year comparisons are difficult given the business has kind of you know you know changed shape dramatically. But even from December quarter to now. You know, we've gone from an EBITDA of about 35 crores to 105 crores, which is almost three times of what we did last quarter. So I think all the benefits uh, of the of the synergies are starting to flow through. Uh, you know, March is generally always a, a good quarter. I think we're looking at another decent quarter coming into June and going forward. So uh, 2015 is is already touted as one of the you know the biggest years that the Hollywood uh, I would say um, big ticket uh, box office is, is expected to produce. You know, we uh, you know did a lot of work on Avengers. We've got uh, Terminator 5, Terminator Genesis coming out. We've got MI5, the new James Bond movie, Ant Man. So. Uh, um, we just delivered work on Avengers 2, which has already grossed a billion dollars in, uh, in a worldwide. So I think our creative business, which delivers about 70, 75 percent of our, 70 or percent of our, uh, our console revenues, uh, I think is, is looking at a very good uh, order backlog and pipeline. I think, frankly, strongest we've, than we've ever had uh, starting April 1st. So we're looking forward to good results in the creative business as well as on the technology business, which continues to grow, you know, fairly rapidly. We did, uh, you know, for March. 14 ended 12 months, you know, the technology business did 160 crores of revenues. You know, for this current March, we've already done 230. 
uh, in that range. So that business on the back of annuity and technology base continues to grow. EBITDA margins again back in that business north of 30 percent. So our core businesses are definitely pumping very, very nicely. Uh, the non-core businesses, I think we've taken the strategic step of not really focusing on that going forward uh, with those exceptions behind us. So I think, you know, we're looking forward to a good fiscal 16. Right. Mr. Rati, can you explain uh, why the employee costs on a year-on-year -year basis have nearly doubled? Well, I think, you know, if you see year on year comparisons are difficult because we, we, we absorbed a couple of businesses. Most notably, we, we absorbed uh, double negative uh, on our international creative businesses side. And I think that's, that's, that's a big business which brought in, uh, which does on an annual basis about $120, $130 million of revenue. So all the employees that came along on that side is, is where you're seeing the impact. I think uh, year on year perspective, I think you'll need to wait another quarter or two before you can start making year on year comparisons, you know, which are competitive. Uh, that's why we're focusing on quarter on quarter, uh, which is, I think, more, uh, more relevant given the fact that the business has fairly transformed itself over the last 12 months. Right. Mr. Rati, you said that you would require better revenues to reach that EBITDA margin level of over 20% uh, going ahead from here on. Uh, uh, give us a sense of how your acquisitions have panned out so far, DAX, Double Negative, and of course Reliance Media Works. How, how much of it has, is actually helping you or what uh, increase in the revenue are you expecting from all of these? Because last I remember when we've been speaking to you, uh, these were at, you know, in their initial stages. But now as time has passed, what kind of growth are you talking targeting because of these three big uh, acquisitions which were made earlier? Well, enough, uh, that's, that's a good question. I think you know, double negative and DAX are already starting to be part of our revenues. Now, they, they are not, the DAX has been there, so smaller acquisitions have been there for the entire last 12 months. Uh, for double negative, it's only a nine-month number that is reflecting here. So on a quarterly perspective, we delivered about 400 plus crores, 420 odd crores of revenues. I think that's the kind of number you should be looking at from an analyzed perspective. I, I think what we had guided towards is uh, FI16, we should be delivering, you know, close to 1,700 crores of, of revenue. So that already is starting to flow in. Uh, Reliance Media Works, that transaction actually closed only on April 7th. So there is no, there is no real, uh, you know, com, you know a contribution from Reliance Media Works for the March quarter. You will see uh, benefits of that flowing in in, uh, in, in the June quarter. Uh, again, uh, that's, that's primarily going to be on the India business side. Um, double negative DAX technologies uh, will continue to be driving, the, uh, driving almost 90% of our business going forward as well. Right. Two more questions, Mr. Rati, here. Uh, any more acquisition that you're planning at this point in time? And second, any more sell-off that you're planning right now? Uh, one which was done in the third quarter. Now, what's the outlook? What's the strategy ahead? Yeah, that's a very good question. I think we've been very active last 12 months, both in the case of, you know, on, on adding the right kind of pieces to our core business, as well as divesting, uh, you know, businesses that, that are better held in other people's hands because they're on core to us. I think we've got uh, most of the stuff behind us now. I think there's a, there's, a, there's a strong momentum on the organic perspective. You've already seen that in this current quarter um, in terms of the increase that you've seen on both revenue and EBITDA. I mean, we actually hit about 25% EBITDA margin this quarter itself, you know, we've continued to guide that we will do FI 16, 20, 22%, and I think I'm going to stay with that. Uh, but I think in terms of the revenue uptake and stuff like that, you already start seeing this on a quarterly perspective. Uh, there's no real strategic kind of steps planned, you know, going forward. I think we've got a lot on our plate. Uh, I think the aim now is integrating the, integrating the workforces, integrating the, uh, the, the work streams on that side and being able to deliver the revenue that we already are delivering, but on the back of a lower cost base. And I think that's where um, the whole offshoring and, and doing the work out of lower cost but highly scalable destinations like India, which is where we've made a big mark for ourselves in the past. Uh, you'll see, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, big movies we're talking about, is it Avengers, is it Terminator, is it Mission Impossible 5? A lot of this work is starting to get done out of India, which is what creates the scale. So I think uh, our Indian uh, creative uh, forces and technical forces are basically delivering, you know, high quality work, you know, to the Hollywood industry. And I think we, we as Prime Focus, uh, I think probably are the only, only company outside the West which is kind of delivering uh, to, you know, to such uh, large franchises which on a normal basis go and make a billion plus dollars on box office. So I think we're very proud of what we're doing. Uh, we've uh, done with that strategic uh, you know, kind right. of transformation. I think it's all about execution, something right, that we Rathi, have in our hands, something uh, done How before. much cash uh, do you have on the books? Uh, you know,
promise on that. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Rathi, you're running short on time. How much cash do you have on the books? And can you give us more details of the fundraising through the warrants that you've done recently? Uh, how are you going to deploy that money? See, I think from our perspective, we've, uh, we've, we've got more than sufficient liquidity in our business, you know, as of, as of March end and as in going forward as well. We've continued to, as you see, our debt, debt balances remain stable from December to now. Uh, I think the deployment of capital going forward is primarily in relation to integration efforts uh, in terms of uh, expanding our capacity, execution capacity in India, which is a lot cheaper than at, and, and reducing the capacity that we have overseas to a certain extent. Um, so, so that's that's kind of what the focus is, and nothing on the back of those those uh, lower cost, I would say, expansion of capacity in India being able to deliver the margins. So we're very comfortable both from liquidity uh, as well as the, the the plans in terms of expanding capacity domestically. All right, Mr. Dali, thank you so much for speaking with us at NDTV Profits, a prime focus managing to expand margins to 25%. And now with the sale of uh, non-core assets behind them, Mr. Rati, hopeful that revenue will get a good push up. Uh, we'll slip into a break at this point of time. When you come back, uh, we'll keep...